Hey, Calvin, thanks for joining us today. As a way of getting started, give us a little background on yourself. Uh, my name is Calvin Johnson. I'm a CEO co-founder at Brevity, which is a AI-powered software helping uh, sales teams role-playing, which has a you know positive impact on a new hire ramp up in overall quota attainment. I uh, grew yeah. up in West Philadelphia, a uh, child of uh, two sales professionals themselves, and uh, kind of unorthodox background. I started off as a CPA, got into management consulting, um, eventually uh, took a risk and joined as employee number five at a tech company in Denver. Uh, and then, you know, through that experience, uh, eventually uh, landed into uh, creating brevity. Yeah. And raised by two salespeople, how do you become a CPA? I mean, th- th- what went wrong? <laughs> <laughs> my, my mom and dad were like, you know, Villanova, I went to Villanova for grad and undergrad. Uh, there was a big push. Um, you know, I scored uh, incredibly well in uh, finance accounting class and uh, professors that actually ended up becoming investors in Brevity, ironically, uh, drove me to pursue a career in accounting. They thought it'd be a really good, you know, foundational background. With that being said, me being on Excel spreadsheets for 12 hours a day uh, during busy season when, you know, my parents are like, how the hell are you going to be a CPA? You can't stop running your mouth. Uh, they were right. Uh, and eventually, you know, followed in their footsteps. Yeah. And give us a little background on brevity. You know, how did it start? Um, whose idea was it? Why are you so passionate about it? I, absolutely. So ironically, so I went from being a CPA management consulting, then I joined uh, as employee number five of the tech company called Thrive Pass out of Denver, Colorado. Uh, they sold corporate wellness, uh, a software as a service solution. And that CEO founder, Wade Rosen, shout out to Wade, said when you, you have the makings of a tech CEO, when you're mature and you have a <laughs> bankable business idea, I'm going to be an early investor uh, in your company. And he ended up keeping that promise. And but why brevity? After that, experience as an employee number five, I had experience with uh, leading a tech team of 10.NET developers in New Delhi. I managed customer success, account management, and they eventually ended up acquiring two companies in the Twin Cities where I led the due diligence and the post-merger integration of those two companies. And through that experience, it was great in terms of getting cross-functional uh, experience, got PL ownership, but eventually, I started my own freelance consulting shop called Humble Warrior Advisors, where I was helping other early stage entrepreneurs get to that next major milestone. Um, but what I found myself helping out the most with was the pitch. And Brian, I'm a huge book nerd. And there was a couple books that really inspired this brevity concept um, in no particular order. Uh, Why They Buy by Cherry Tree. Uh, story brand made the stick by Dan and Chip uh, Heath, and then the one that really took it over the edge, who ended up becoming an advisor investor in this company, is uh, Brandt, who's the author of the Three Minute Rule: Saying Less to Get More. And I read this book, uh, and it was the most pragmatic way to help people craft and deliver a persuasive pitch and presentation. And Love the book so much. I reached out to the author Cole on LinkedIn, um, and he actually wrote me back. And then this is during COVID, um, where I was helping clients try and raise capital. And once he wrote me back on LinkedIn, I just had some courage and said, Hey, it would mean the world if you gave me 20 minutes of your time to see if one of my clients implemented the best practices from your book. And he ended up giving us an hour Zoom call. And at the end of that Zoom call, he mentioned that he was looking to bridge the gap from learning to application by producing an online course. And through that um, experience, I was just like, all right, what are the current tools in the market if someone has an amazing idea, but they have difficulty crafting and delivering this way of pitch and presentation? And on one end, you had expert pitch consultants, coaches, that not necessarily everybody can afford. And on the other end, you have these expert books and blogs that can be time consuming to learn and apply those insights into action. 
And then when I looked under the pitch and presentation software as a service market, 99% were hyper-focused on fly design, layout, and format, but not a lot of people were really focused on story content and messaging from a self-service perspective. So we saw a gap and no different than TurboTax. We, it's kind of the first product we had was a mix of TurboTax and Grammarly, um, where you're getting that step-by-step -step guidance to craft and also deliver a persuasive pitch. And then we, in the beginning of this year, we ended up pivoting. We found a greater pain point where um, sales teams, when it comes to overcoming objections through the various stages of the sales process, role playing is a common you know, mechanism to help train and develop your reps. But there's only so much manual training and peer to peer training that can be done. And then we eventually created an AI powered role playing software. And that's kind of where we've uh, shifted the direction of the company. And what's the feedback been so far? The feedback's been great, right? Our, our first paid pilot, we were able to uh, increase not just set appointments, but completed demos by close to 400%. Uh, and then the training period was shortened by close to 30%. Yeah, the sales definitely has a practice problem. I, I know, and I and I played Division One football, and a lot of you know we we played. I played. Uh, I was a part of the 2010 national championship team, and to be honest, what you practice was a lot harder uh, than the actual game. Sure, and that's on purpose, right? Correct. Correct. Yeah. Because that game is so important. Correct. So the, I mean, I think my team teammates, we had about like, and Villanova is like Division One Double A. I think we had about five people make the NFL from that team, and yeah, practice was not fun, but that's where we got better. Yeah, because in sales, how do we practice? Most people just uh, think they sit there and they go, "How's the call going to go?" Well, they're going to say hello, and I'm going to say hello. <laughs> what do I do? Well, what am I doing? And it's like our, our big whole overall theme at Brevity is really just turning insights into action, turning ambition into action, right? Yeah. So one of the big things I struggle with during you know some of my sales calls is asking for budget, right? And, that, and seeing you know you've identified X Y Z as a problem. You said that this is the impact. You know what funding does your team have allocated to solving X Y Z issue? And yeah. I practice that on Brevity role play. Every day, right? Because it's an area within a sales conversation, even being, you know, from the East Coast and being confident, I get a little, you know, oozy in my stomach sometimes. And being able to have that practice and repetition, we use our own product to sell our product, right? And that's had some, you know, tremendous benefit. That's it, because role playing is nice, but you need another person. And that Correct. other person doesn't have a stake in the game. They're like, yeah, hey, hello. Yeah, yeah, not interested. You like you play the game with each other, but it's not really real. You kind of break rapport all the time. Correct. It is like a jovial. Like if I'm, my co-founder Max Huck and I have been friends since three years old, right? Like there's a jovial nature to our relationship, right? One, the problem with role playing, one, it takes time to schedule, yeah. and people are in meetings back to back, right? And, and then two. That jovial nature, you may let me slide or you may not take it as serious where what we've set up, we have 12 different voices in the software that can go from calm, that can go to angry, right? And it's randomized objections that you get. So it really keeps you on your toes. That's it. Yeah, because when you set the appointment to do the role plan and every company tries it, especially right after training. Mm-hmm. And then most managers want to do it with the reps, but they get bored with it. Correct. This, they got other things on their mind. Right. So the managers say, well, leave me a voicemail with our elevator pitch once a day. And you're like, okay, that doesn't feel awkward now, does it? Correct. Correct. You know, is your Super manager awkward. even going to listen to it? Do they give you any feedback? They'll say, oh, just do it better next time. Okay. <laughs> that doesn't tell you anything. It's not constructive. It's not directive feedback. Right. And, you know, for people that are serious about getting better, those eight players, um, you want directive based feedback. I really break down feedback into three different buckets, affirm, 
affirming what I'm currently doing, um, what's missing and what I'm currently doing. And then what are some new ideas or alternative approaches that I can consider to get better for the next time I get in the game? And, you know, for the last five years, a lot of people have been looking at call intelligence to solve this problem, but that gives you just cursory feedback, you know, talk, listen times, question, answer, but that, that's not practice. That's real life. Correct. Yeah. And it, it gets, it's too late. Right? It's too late. So, <laughs> right. So, right. You know, and that's the inspection of sales performance, right? So, you know, my defensive back coach, if we've identified, you know, some, you know, uh, footwork in, in a game or, or if I'm, you know, if someone's doing a hitch and my footwork's a little sloppy to, uh, you know, jump on that, that hitch and be able to make that tackle at the right angle. Well, we now have identified the weaker area. You've gotten the insight, but how do you turn that insight into a specific drill before the game the next Saturday? And that's essentially what we're doing. Inspection of sales performance is paramount, but how do you turn the inspection, get that, take that coaching feedback into a way to practice that, develop that muscle memory? to where it becomes automatic, similar to a recent post you just had um, to by the time you get into that next scenario or situation, it's, it's off the top of your head. Which brings up a great point because I think too many salespeople are comfortable with the, I know it, the conscious level. Now let's take Mm -hmm. that to football. Every, everybody on the team knows how to play football, right? Yep. Every opponent knows how to play football. Why do you right. practice then? You you, you want it. it muscle memory. You want it subconscious. Correct. Correct. They so take it from conceptualization to actualization. Yeah. So that you don't have to think about it. It becomes natural. You see the ball coming to you. Your arms go up. You don't have to think, oh, I should, should I catch it or not? No, you, you're going to catch it. Got to catch it. Got to catch it. <laughs> and that takes a long time. How long have you been playing football? I was playing football since seven years, seven years old. Yeah. You know, I, I was a baseball player, a pitcher. So guess what the coach had me do all the time? Throw to the catcher, throw to the catcher, throw to the catcher. Yep, I know how to yep. throw the baseball, but it, they want you to be automatic. Correct. Yeah. And that's essentially what our value proposition is. And, and this is kind of... I think the most usable AI I've seen in the sales tech space, you know, coming up with automated spam or, you know, even analyzing calls, I I haven't really seen any real value out of it. This I see value to because reps need a way of practicing on their own. Period. Period. You know, yeah, period. There's no other, it's, it's, you know, we've gotten to the point you're, you're doing your team a disservice if you're not enabling this practice. You know, turning your sales playbook into a the sales playground is kind of it's 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 essential. Yeah. Now I'm biased because you know I co conceived this this concept with my, my business partners, but we use it daily, and it's like three to seven minutes in the morning as a part of your morning routine and ritual on the most challenging areas that you're having within your sales conversations, this makes a difference. Yeah. And I've used it. And (laughs) well, I got to imagine even before a call, any call, or even in in a podcast interview, if it has a warm up to just get the brain and the juices going, get the mouth moving. Oh, it's huge. To, To go off of that, the, Sample questions you even provided me in this podcast. I literally put those in the brevity role play and practice once or twice. Nothing too crazy, but it took from a setup to practicing those questions, the sample questions you provided me, it took about seven minutes of my time. Right. And you felt better afterwards. Correct. <laughs> You're like, okay, I wonder how it's going to go. The, the role playing in your head. It's better than nothing, but it's nothing compared to doing it. Get the mouth and hearing moving. a voice, yes. and, and hearing an actual voice, and hearing different voices. Now I know your voice already, so this isn't a uh, high pressured, 
right. high stress not... situation, right? But for those where, you know, the CEO at the company, the economic buyer is like, yo, I don't have, I know we have an hour, but we only got 25 minutes. How do you respond to that? Right. Calmly, confidently, with composure. <laughs> we'll get that repetition in brevity role play. That's it. Because I think the longer people use something like this to develop their skills, they'll find the nuances like the football coach did with your leg movements. Correct. You didn't see it because you're not looking at your legs. You're thinking of just running the play. The coach sees what you're doing wrong or room for improvement. And brevity can do that for you. Absolutely. Well, where do you see this technology going? Just, just making it more and more realistic. Yeah. You know that that is it's the typical sales conversation. Just continuing to make this easier to implement, making it easier to practice. Um, and yeah, that's where I see this going. It's becoming uh, one of the best communication training platforms um, in the world. Because how do salespeople do it otherwise? Review, there's there's three mechanisms, right? You got reviewing your sales playbook, right? And passive. I call these passive activities. Before you have game day over here, and you got passive, you got active, and you got passive. You know how it's typically done is you have manual role playing, which is still good, right? Yep. You have reviewing your sales playbook. You have reviewing your calls. You have shadowing the best rep. But again, those are pretty passive activities. So we, what we want to do is make sure the insights are good. And if the insight is good, you have to have a way to practice that before you just go into the game. That's it, because it's too expensive to do it on real deals. We, it's way too expensive, even for us, right? There's different qualification frameworks. You got Bant, you got Medic, right? When the way our sales process works, we have test drives as you took a test drive of brevity role play, but we got to have the important pieces of information and be able to really personalize that demo from a, from a needs perspective, right? Do we, we, do we take care of the need? But what we've identified is if you're not asking, okay, well, it seems like this could be a great fit. Who are the other key decision makers that need to be involved to, you know, possibly drive this forward? And then you, what you may find out is you're not talking to the economic buyer. Right. <laughs> right. And then, you you know, t- 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 be slow. Like, oh, what was that guy's name again? Blah, blah, blah. Who else? And not being so hasty to just move forward, but stay controlled in that sales process. That's what brevity role plays even helped us. And, and I think it also, because in today's world, it takes a long time to get somebody to pick up on the other line, just mm-hmm. out of trial and error. You get a lot of voicemails, you get a lot of no answers, a lot of, you know, do not disturbs. So the rep needs those 10,000 hours. Why not do it, condense that through interacting with AI instead of interacting with a prospect? Get, Correct. Them, get a year's worth of experience in a quarter simply by putting, you know, five or 10 minutes here and there on brevity to get the juices flowing, get the feedback going fast, and no one's judging you. Correct. Well, we do have AI scoring on the back end. Auto right, score, but, right? So but that, your manager's but it's not, not. Correct. Correct. Like an opera singer would not just go on stage. It's awkward. Yeah. Because their voices aren't warmed up. Yeah. Right. So an opera singer needs to go through those repetitions. La 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 la. Like they gotta do their <laughs> Do <thing>. that again. <laughs> la 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 la. Right. They gotta do that before they just go on stage to, you know, get a standing ovation. And we need to look at the sales profession in the same manner. That's it. And we we don't. It's too subjective. And let's face it, the manager just wants a deal. They want meetings. They don't mm-hmm. want to diagnose each sentence, each response. They don't have time. And they the don't. rep assumes no, no, they they're great. Do it. Mm-hmm. 
the reps, you know, everyone thinks they're an A player until they open I their know. mouth, right? <laughs> Here they have a practice buddy that can help them get better at the pace they want to get better at. Correct. Correct. And you can think about the greats, right? Like you think about the Kobe Bryant, you know, rest in peace, Jordans, you know, they are maniacal about practice, right? Yes. And, you know, the game is won really before it starts. Yeah. And that is really our motto at this company. And, and in sales, up until now, we haven't had a way of practicing. Correct. That, that scales that you can do every day that you have control over. Correct. You know, I had one guy on the show, guy in his 50s. He practiced his opener every day, all day in the morning. His family would just be annoyed, introducing himself, explaining what he does, flipping it to them. He does it in the shower. Now, I've met one sales rep that does that. <laughs> That's it. What do the rest of us do? Mm -hmm. Yep. It is our, our most successful companies, they look at that. Because you're not always going to get connects when you're dialing. Not, no. Right? So so you don't want to wait till like you got a great prospect that fits your ideal customer profile. And because it's not muscle memory, you botch it and you miss the meeting. And first impressions, unfortunately, are everything. So right. our most successful companies take that breakfast time and lunch time get three to five minutes before they start their progression of dials. And you can do this for all kinds of calls, discovery calls, competitive calls, closing calls, demo Correct. calls. Correct. My favorite is doing it for, I'm not a big, you know, big Sandler fan, qualify hard to close easy. Yeah. And that's where, you know, we've identified a gap in our own company of, you know, mediocre qualification. So we specifically use Brevity Roleplay as an organization to practice our own qualification script, making sure we're getting the key elements and not just giving people a demo. Right. They have to unpeel the onions and earn the right to receive a demo. Because this isn't just reading the script. It's all the nuances of communication. Correct. Yeah. So it's not just recording you record reading something it's the interaction it feels like you're really talking to somebody exactly and somebody that you're not anticipating sometimes correct and the way we set up the software is when you go from one rep to the next you're going to get a different voice and you're going to get different objections yeah so it's gamified so people can't like just game it and figure it out and, and what have reps told you about this after they've used it? They love it. They yeah. love it. Specifically that, well, you know, there's five use cases right now for Brevity role play. Uh, number one, not in any particular order, but just if we think about it from a life cycle perspective, some people are using it to vet sales candidates during the interviewing process. We have certain people. We also have a job interview role play where you can enter your LinkedIn URL, the job description, and we automatically curate the questions and answers to help you prepare your content and delivery for that interview. We have sales process and product service onboarding, right? We're able to whip up sales playbooks in under seven minutes with our AI. Um, and then the other two use cases are what I would call uh, performance fine tuning and daily warm ups. Yeah. So those are the five. That's kind of the life cycle of how this product is being used. Um, but the feedback is excellent. Um, you know, when it comes to great feedback on the job interview, we've had people secure jobs with the Strikers and Johnson and Johnson of the world with one of our first uh, paying customers in the, in the med device uh, yeah. industry, and um, you know, just the daily warm ups and just picking something that you're struggling with. Once you got that insight from your coach, being able to practice and rehearse that. So by the next time you run into a situation, uh, it is subconscious and it just off rolls off the tip of your tongue. Right. Because I think too many people in sales, almost all the questions I get are about repairing 
when something goes wrong. What you're doing is preventing things from going wrong. <laughs> correct, correct. Preventing, you know, talking to a champion and you never got, you know, buy-in from the economic buyer. You're going to you're going to lose. Like you you're not you, you got to get the right pieces of information to qualify hard to close easy. And that's where I think this product um I think it's great for SDRs, but those account executives that you know need to go through you know getting those critical pieces of information to vet if it's actually a qualified opportunity that's where i think this product can can you know take take storm yeah because let's say you're not used to handling you know somebody who's agitated somebody who's aggressive here's a way of doing it that's real correct and, and i've and, seen and, those they yell at you and <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's cr it's crazy. Like we we one of our ironically one of my worst sales conversations since I started uh, since we started Brevity. Um, you know, the guy was a prick. His tone was off. He was brash, and ironically, one of the twelve voices in the software sounds exactly like that prick. Yeah. So I make sure I select that voice every single time so when i run into another one um you know being able to adjust the different tones and personalities is, is important in sales so that voice variety is another big value add that we provide our customers and how about managers what do they like about it the scalability right so if you're managing you know 11 you know 11 you know sales development reps uh being able to quickly create assignments, blast that out to all 11 of your SDRs, being able to review whether they completed the assignment or not, being able to look at the letter grade and the different comp components of our auto scoring, um, they love it. Yeah. It's just accountability. Cool. Hey, this has been a great conversation. Where can people go to connect with you and learn more about the company and the product? Yeah, bre brevitypitch.com. You know, select uh, contact sales and myself or Max Huck will be able to, uh, you know, see if this is a good fit for your team.